Hi there, I'm Christine, the Gemini Stitcher, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I bobbed on on a sunny Saturday to go through all the garments that I made in the month of July. In a little bit more detail, I know I cover these in my weekly makes and plans, but we just do a little bit of an overview. So we're going to do a little bit more of a deeper dive into each garment so get yourself a brew get some snacks get belted in and let's get cracking they're all on the rail behind me and i'm going to bring them forward and showcase them one by one in the order that i plan them in for july so i'm going to start at this end and work our way to the barbie end the first thing I made in July was the Solange dress for my Busy Bees sewing pattern challenge and I wanted to get it done and dusted so that was the first thing I made in July even though the reveal wasn't until the end of the month so I'll just grab a Solange. Here it is. It's been made in the Happy Blooms Viscose fabric from Guthrie & Garner. It is super vibrant and lovely and buttery soft and floaty fabric. The Solange dress is an Italia jupe dress and I've never made one of their patterns before. But I did quite like it. The pattern details were a little bit skimpy for a beginner, but on the whole, they were very good. If you want to see in real detail how I got on with it, there is a video of the reveal of the Solange dress. So I'll bob the link for that in the show notes for you if you fancy a watch. So the Solange dress, I made it as a three quarter dress with slits at the side. It has A burrito back yoke and a vent pleat in the centre of the back, elasticated waist, and so as I've already said, side slits either side, which makes it a super summery dress. It is a faux wrap dress, it crosses over at the front, but it is a solid skirt at the bottom, which means you're not going to have any accidents if the wind gets up and gives a gust up your legs. So the Solange dress, what else can I say about it? I'll give you the size range below. Will I make it again? Debatable. When I revealed this, I said that I would. And now I've thought about it and I've worn it a couple of times. I'm not 100% that the style is me, not in the length that I've made it in. I'll pop some pics up of me wearing it and you can judge for yourselves. I think if I made it again, I would probably use the pattern to make a beach or poolside throw on and do a shorter version of it. In fact, I have got some Barbie pink fabric that might work for that. The check. Maybe. I will not do the link half down and I'll do this in it instead, a simpler version. Watch this space. So that's the Solange from Italia Duke. The second thing on my list for July were the sepia trousers. So I'll just grab those and we can have a chat. These are they, they're a little bit creased. Apologies, I had them on yesterday. <laughs> they are in a gorgeous apple green viscose linen that I got from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. They may, may in fact still have some of this in stock. It is a really good quality for a linen viscose and the feel and handle of it is great for the sepia trousers. So what can I say about the sepias other than I love them? This is the second pair that I've made. They have 
a double pocket detail at the front. So you've got one pocket there and then a second pocket, which is a really cute detail. Elasticated waist for comfort, which is always good with summer lightweight trousers and a tie waist detail. At the back, there are two patch pockets. And the other main detail on these are all the pleats or darts. There's darts along the hem there. And then there are also, try to find them, there it is, there it is. There's also knee darts, which is a really good feature. They're called peg trousers. And I'll be putting some images up. And I will put a stock image so that you can see the shape of them. But I hope you can see from me wearing them, these are really, really comfortable, nice, smart, casual trousers for the spring, summer and into autumn. I put the size range down at the bottom because they're closet core trousers. Now, the only thing with these is that you can only get them as part of the closet core crew membership and as somebody pointed out last week i think it was that you can only get the sepias if you pay for the back catalogue as well so they can be quite an expensive pattern unfortunately at the moment but you don't know closet call may well release them at some point into general sale and if they do i would recommend grabbing this pattern because it is my best summer trouser pattern at the moment absolutely love these so then to go with the sepias i made the ellie and mark geo geometric color block tea try saying that when you've had a drink and here it is a little bit wrinkled because it's straight out of the wash apologies it's been made in a pattern petal pattern jersey with a bright neon and then purple accent around the v-neck now i'm not clever enough to match all these fabrics so how did i do it i bought them in a little kit from eliza mac fabrics and it's come out really good now ellie and mac do a sew along for this t-shirt and i if you're going to make one i totally recommend watching it and following it because it is exceptional i'm not saying i couldn't have made this t-shirt without it but it certainly made life a lot easier and i got it done a lot quicker so i'll pop the size range at the bottom and there'll be a link for this particular pattern as with all of them in the show notes and i will have been putting some pics of me wearing this t-shirt as we've been chatting so we'll move on now to the controversial, oh, put it the right way around, Mabel top. I do like this top, don't get me wrong, but like a lot of people have been saying, there's a little bit of controversy about where the shearing falls because we're led to believe it's at the waistline but when you put this on and I think you might see from me wearing it with the sashes that I'm going to show you in a minute it's quite a high waist which is fine if you're expecting it and you're happy with that I don't particularly like them when they're so high up so if I make this again I'm going to lengthen the bodice which is unusual for me I never normally have to do that with any of my patterns because I'm only short so gosh knows how people are getting on who are tall as well. It must be really, really under their bus line. I made it in a seersucker blue and white gingham from Ammo Threads, which is a dead stock clearance shop. You can go online and order on there and you get things at bar fabrics at bargain prices. So the size range for the Mabel will have been whizzing across the bottom will i make the mabel again 
Yes, I did enjoy making it and I will make the dress, probably not till next spring or summer now. But I do fully intend to make the dress version and I will lengthen the bodice for sure. So we'll just take the Mabel off because I teamed it up with the next thing that's on my makes list or was on my makes list for July. And that was the sashes. These are one of my staple trousers. I make them every year. They're from Closet Core Patterns. And they're just a really, really good fit. I do extend from the crotch to the waist by about maybe two inches because they are a mid-rise and I prefer more of a high-rise trouser so I do extend from the crotch front and back to make them a higher waist. You can put vent pockets in the back. This is a busy fabric so I chose not to. I don't know what else I can say about them really other than I make them every year so they must be okay. Oh, they've got side pockets and then I've put the fabric to match the top inside the pockets as well. I'll have popped the size range down below. The fabric I used for this pair is a stretch cotton sateen so it has got a little bit of stretch in it which helps with the sashes so you do recommend fabrics with slight stretch and I got this fabric from Little Miss So and So but it was a while back so you'll have to go on the site and check if you want some of this if they've got any left if they haven't it's coming to the end of the summer so possibly they won't get any more in this year we're doing all right so far. So what else did I make in July? The next thing that was on my list, we'll grab them both. These didn't get made in the order that they were on the list, but I've just organised them that way. I had on my list two Marlowe cardigans. And this was a bit of a saga because it took longer than I thought to make them. I had to wait for buttons to arrive because I wanted big chunky buttons on them. I'll just show you them on the purple one. How sparkly are those? Lovely. These will be my third and fourth Marlowe cardigan. So I obviously like it. Word of warning, the Marlowe does come out extremely large. So these have been sized down. I should have been a size 6, I think, and I sized them down to a size 2. So I came down two full sizes. And if I wanted a more fitted one, I could actually probably get away with doing a size 0. That's how big they are. So love the Marlowe. Be careful with the sizing. The fabrics that these have been made in are French terry fabrics. The bright pink one is from Little Miss So-and-So. And then this super funky fabric in the bright floral rainbow colours is from Flamingo Fabrics. And again, all the links will be down below. Moving along to what was probably my biggest sew of July and that was the Joe dress. If you don't know that I made a Joe dress in July, I don't know how because I've plastered it everywhere. I was so proud of this dress. It is, it looks quite simple but there is a lot of couture sewing in the Joe dress. I'll just get up close and then you can see it has, you can see the bias binding along all the seams, all around the neck, all around the back, all along, oops, all along the sleeves. 
And that's all I'm going to say. There's a lot of sewing in the Joe dress. It has a fitted waist at the front, but then it is elasticated at the back. So it's super comfortable and it has a long zip. So it's easy to get in and out of. And then a slit at the bottom. I made this in a cotton poplin from Sew Over It that I got quite a while back. So it's given it a bit of a vintage vibe. I've got another one planned for my August makes that's been done in an Ankara fabric and it's a lot brighter and will the Joe dress will look completely different in different fabrics. So stay tuned to see how that one turns out in August. Then, let's get back. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say. Totally, unintentionally, I ended up making a Barbie pink outfit when the Barbie movie came out. I've not made a dress. I made these foxy boxy shorts, they're called. They've got a really wide elasticated waist and they're super floaty. They're from Grace of Steel. They have hidden side pockets and the big elastic waist that makes them so, so comfortable. I haven't worn them yet. I'm saving them for my holes. This is one of my new holiday outfits for September. So watch this space. I will let you know I get on. And I have teamed them up with, if I can straighten it out on the hanger, it would help, a donny top in the same fabric. Now this fabric was from Beyond the Pink Door, in pink, from one of their subscription boxes. So it is not readily available, I'm afraid. But wow, they're not going to miss me on the beach in this, are they? So what did I think of the Donny top? It was a nice sew. It was great because there were no buttons, but it looks like a blouse. And its sizing is a little bit out, I think. I made this true to my size and it is quite floaty i wasn't bothered because that's what i wanted i wanted something loose and floaty for in the heat on holiday but if i made another one for wearing in the uk i would downsize by two sizes so yeah love the donny top don't like the sizing and then Last but definitely not least, if you don't know, I have two miniature schnauzers, an eight-year-old called Lily and a one-and-a-half-year-old little monkey called Esme. And yes, she is named after Esme on the sewing bee because, no disrespect, Esme, you just remind me of a little schnauzer. <laughs> so she's named after you. And I... I've been promising them new dog beds for quite a while, but couldn't find an easy enough pattern that would work for them. Just grab one of them. I ended up making these gorgeous donut style dog beds. So they are basically just two circles with different diameter circles sewn into them and then cord threaded through the two outer ones that you can adjust you can have it as a flat bed or you can cinch it up and they weren't sure about them at first but they actually like them now we're getting there what is it about dogs and you're getting them a new bed they always want the whole the old smelly one don't they 
So that was July. What do we think? If I make as many things as I made in July in August, I am going to need more than 10 days in Gran Canaria in September to recover. Let me tell you. <laughs> I have got a lot more on in August, so the chances of me doing this much sewing in August is quite minimal, to be fair. But I'm going to give it a go. I've got my list. I've already done my August plans video, so if you've not watched it, again, I'll bob the link in the show notes below. Give it a watch and follow me every Monday for my Monday makes and plans and see how I'm getting on, whether I'm actually manning, managing to keep on track. Also in August is the second challenge of the Busy Bees challenge, Sewing Challenge, which is going to be the Transformation Challenge. So I'm on with that as well. So I'm a bit of a busy bee in August. Hope you've enjoyed looking at my july makes wardrobe and if you want any more information about any of the patterns that i've shown you send me a message comment and i'll try and help hope you're having a lovely sunny sewing day today and i will see you on monday for an update on my august makes and plans take care and happy sewing everybody bye for now <laughs>